Doing great, thanks, Martin. Yeah, it's great uh, to get the brothers and sisters sent off for a week and uh, have a more relaxed uh, time here in Ireland. But no, it's uh, it's great to have them back competing, to be honest. It's been a long wait for them to, to get back into action. So it's, it's really good that they're out there competing again. Yeah, so obviously with COVID, everybody's severely impacted, but there's a lot of uh, paperwork that goes behind the scene. We make applications now to uh, our governing body to to get uh, an application to go to travel, first of all, uh, because travel is obviously banned unless it's non-essential. And uh, this is uh, regarded as essential because it's an Olympic qualification event. Um, no, no direct flights at the minute, so... Uh, the guys are taking multiple flights to to get to the location, um, and then there's the COVID testing that goes with it. The test before they go, antigen testing to go via Amsterdam. So a lot of logistics, a lot of paperwork, but thankfully they've arrived in one piece and have got to the courts and uh, and have started very well. So. I have been traveling to some of the events and some of the, the major team events uh, and I was doing the national coaching role for almost two years uh, and luckily uh, now we've appointed uh, Davis Ephraim from Indonesia to come on board and to to provide the, the encore coaching and to support us that way. Uh, so it means that I can get stuck into overseeing the overall program. Uh, not only just their elite training, but our national underage squads, our coaching systems, and try and put a bit more weight uh, to the work that we do. Um, we have been quite stretched um, for the last while, um, but it's been going from strength to strength at the minute, and uh, Davos has been a good addition to the team, and we've also got other staff members here chipping in for the logistics side of things. We've got uh, Carla Kennedy, who does a lot of bookings and logistics work, uh, and another girl in the office, Sarah Donahue, who does a lot of the video analysis and clipping for us. So we're sm a small team, but we're we're all working busy and, and trying to, to to add as much as possible to to improve the system. Uh, I feel that we're we're building towards that step that we want to make. Uh, I remember like pretty much one of our first goals, uh, you know, pre-2012 was to try and create a home base system in Ireland. Uh, and just at that point, Richard Vaughan uh, had come in to Bampton, Ireland, and uh, I was one of the first staff members to, to start to work along with him when he first came on board. And he had a clear vision of where he wanted Bampton Ireland to get to and it was something that I believed in and um, we're very lucky we had another uh, head of our board Ronan Rooney who, who's been a huge support who was really backing uh, the way that that went wanted to go um, and we set out a number of goals four year eight year 12 year uh, and we and we changed our, our system we created a talent system where it was identified by results and by fitness levels and clear objectives per age group all the way up to senior. Um, so, so we start, you know, with our underage cause from 13, 15, 17s, 19s, senior, and then we even added in the masters category and we have got a, a para national squad also. So we're pretty much covered across all the board and we really are trying to make a big push in of each of the different uh, sections. So we've got a good team of, you know, volunteer coaches working with the national underage teams. Uh, we've got Leslie Jewett doing huge work with the para and the para squad. Um, and then at the senior 
level, we've got Davis and myself uh, putting in the work there with these guys. Um, and, and then we aligned our coach education system with the Bampton World Federation. Uh, and we've got a coach education officer, Craig McCourtney, who's pushing that side of things. Yeah, we've got a couple of ways of doing it. We've got a technique program, which is like a white to black belt uh, for Bampton. It starts at white and goes to black. Instead of belts, we hand out T-shirts. So we have summer camps each year for those, which we we use to kind of bring players from all around Ireland and then and try and identify which players are good and then try and you know direct them to a coach within their region that can help them get to the next level. Then we've got our national underage squads where we have the first squads are completely open so that we can use that as a talent ID day to kind of scout talent from that. Uh, and then we also have our academy systems dotted around Ireland where players that are showing good potential from a young age can go and do more training four to five times a week from their region, at the region that they're in. So that's like, play, you know, kids from as young as... 11, 12, 13, training five days a week after school and then filtering into the national system. Something we didn't have in place before, um, especially when I was growing up, it, it wasn't like that. Um, you know, but I was lucky to have the internal competition from a big family. So it was like getting getting your getting your name up on the on the on the fridge, up a little bit higher where you've beaten your brothers or sisters. But but uh just trying to create that kind of training across Ireland and then so rather than just have your national teams where it's team players from either Dublin or Belfast, it's players from, you know, Munster, Connacht, or different small hubs making up the team. And uh, it's been very good to see the players from Connacht and Munster break through now and make up these along with the best players from Ulster and Dublin, which, you know, stereotypically in the past would have been your your stronger provinces, but there's a great spread of players now. Uh, I'd say that, you know, our town is a good case study all, almost for high performance sport, a small town where everybody loves sport, whether it's soccer, hockey, badminton, and, you know, we've had internationals in, in hockey and and players that have done very well, obviously, like Shea Given from Donegal in, in, in soccer and, and guys like that. But there is there is other areas around Ireland that are like that. I know, like from Ennis, there were, there was a good setup there where we've got Moya Ryan, who's across there at the minute in the last sixteen of the Swiss Open. She's come from Ennis, and she she, she has come system there. There's been other players in the past, like uh, Al Braden, who coached down there, and a number of other guys, uh, and the same in, in Nina. And temporary, where you've got Mike O'Mara and his son Daniel O'Mara coming through now, and uh, and then even further back, at, you know, Tommy Reedy, who played along with Mike, who who went on to become uh, Ireland's like one of Ireland's first uh, Olympians. Although he represented America, he obviously was uh, you know growing up in Munster, and that's 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 where he started playing his Bampton. So. You know, it does happen, um, and I think that's because maybe if you don't have everything, you know, just given to you from when you start, you really cherish that opportunity to go and to to train and to learn from the, the best players that you meet, the best coaches that you meet. And it's trying to create that culture for everyone in every area. Uh, and then, you know, with the guys that do have everything from the beginning, that you know, that they too appreciate it and also give a hundred percent, you know, from what they get.
Yeah, well, Badminton was big in the in Royal Empire School that, that we went to. It was like hockey and badminton was two of the big sports. Although we we played some badminton within the school, but a lot of the, the badminton that we played was, you know, after school ourselves where we were lucky enough to have access to a local club. It's a one, a one court hall, you, you know, you've heard from Sam and, and Josh where where we grew up and you hear of the theatre of dreams or so the bar, barnyard of dreams really because it was an, an old church building that was you know falling to pieces and the members there put a huge effort into uh, you know getting the hall back to a playable state um, and there's you know great work done by uh, you know William Craig and, and my father Sammy who and and the other members who put in huge amount of effort to get the hall back to the the way it is and there's no uh that, that was you know that, that was back when we were juniors yeah when we were juniors yeah so like when we were you know 12 12 13 years of age they they were they were getting the hall literally the walls were caving in you know the roof was fall falling in and uh they they did lots of really good work to go again and you know something that maybe we as kids took for granted because we were just running out playing on court and these guys were you know bringing you know barrel loads of stones from the wall out of the building and you know cement, getting the wall cemented again and and then Sam and Chloe and a lot of the guys did fundraisers after that uh, to you know pay for Yonix Matt to go into the hall and uh, you know there's you know 50 odd kids on a juvenile club going into that that hall train and hitting shuttles against the wall, skipping. Yeah, it's hard not to be passionate about it when when you see you know everybody in the club put an effort into to, to rebuild rebuild the hall. And I know, like you know, I I seen Adam Hall like started off in a in a a club in Scotland, and he holds a lot of great memories from it. And it's really similar for ourselves. We, you know, we look, we'll always look back and refer as our as our first home of Bampton, really. Yeah, yeah, badly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, no. Uh, you know, I still play. I, I I still play domestically for fun. Um, it's a it's a long it's a it's a long time uh, ago since. I was on the Irish team along with Chloe and Sam over, you know, great memories of when we win our division in the Suderman Cup over in Glasgow, actually, in Scotland, when the Suderman Cup was held there. Um, and, you know, winning national titles along with Sam and doubles. And it was, you know, great times. And I really, and I still play in the Leinster senior team that plays in the top division in the English inter-county leagues. Uh, but, but purely for fun and to keep, keep the belly down really now at this stage. Uh, mm. Mm. That's it. Yeah, like, you know, I just love Bampton, love playing it. And, uh, you know, I get a great kick out of uh, going out and, and challenging myself, even though the body isn't as quick as what it was. The mind, the mind's still sharp and, and I just love playing. And we have great uh, matches at Christmas time normally when uh, pre-COVID where we go home and play a group of uh, our cousins meet up uh, in the hall uh day after christmas and and we uh pair up where we get joshua and sam and we try and get them the weakest possible partners so we can try and beat them but uh they they still manage to come out i think chloe's won it won it a good few times at this point as well so <laughs> well there you go we'll get We'll get you. We'll get you partnered up with Sam, so yeah, you have no excuses then if you, if you don't if you don't win it. Yeah, they play uh, Mark Lamphus and Isabel Hertrich tomorrow. Um, so you know it'll be a tough matchup. The Germans are playing 
especially well. We saw them last last week in Finland. They looked really sharp. Um, obviously, they're in there. They've had a great season. So it'll be a tough match. Um, Sam and Chloe are just delighted to be back on court playing again. And it was a good start for them yesterday. So I hope that if they can get their best level out, you know, they can they can really test the Germans and. And uh, it, will, it will give us a good indication of, you know, where the level is after that long layoff as well, you know. Yeah, no, like there's the, the biggest change you'll ever make is, you know, changing your mind from being a player to a coach. Uh, that first time, that first year where you, you go to be a coach, um, you're going out there and you're, you're talking to your players and you still kind of got your, it's the old cliche, but you've got your player hat on and you're, and you're, you're telling them to do things to win points, how you play, how you would do it. So if, say, for example, I'm coaching you, Martin, and my favorite shot is a cross slice. I'm telling you to cross slice to win that point, but maybe that's not your strength. Maybe your strength is to build the rally and then and then make the winner, or maybe your strength is to try and win the rallies quick. But you've got to really try and find what your player strengths are and then help them to bring that out on court rather than try and play the match uh, the way you would play through their body so to speak. So I, I learned a lot uh, from my formal education and non-formal. I was lucky to work with a lot of good coaches. Um, we, I, I went over and shadowed Jim Laugason over in Denmark. I was lucky to work a, lo a lot with Tommy Reedy. Um, then we had Erwin Saya from Indonesia uh, over here, John Quinn, you know, from England. And they, they all, my, my idea is to try and steal as much information as possible from each of these guys and and to try and learn from them uh, if it's only one thing uh, and that you, that you can learn from coaches you can learn from players I feel you can learn from everybody if you're, if you're willing to try and you know give it a go what they say and if it works for you it works if it doesn't what have you lost you, you can only develop as a coach by, by trying new things and for the formal side of coach education I've done the Bampton World Federation Level 1 Level 2 and the last one I did was over in Denmark for the, the level three. Uh, and that, that was brilliant. That was a two week course over in Denmark led by Ian Wright from the BWF, Kenneth Larson, Sharon Springer and um, Martin Andrews. And they delivered an absolutely brilliant uh, course where they really challenged you to try and look at your system, how you can improve your system, different methods of coaching. Um, it was just a brilliant cor course and a, a really you know, give me a new refreshed energy to come back and try new things within my sessions. And, and I feel it really helped for that period because I, I went into the national coach role um, for those two years when John Quinn finished up with us. We had an interim where we were looking for coaches and um, it took us a bit longer to bring someone in than, than we hoped. But then I was I got the lucky opportunity to go out there and, and you know, work with the Irish team at the European qualifications and then at the European Games. So it was a brilliant experience. Yeah. Ten, ten, year, ten years, ten years, ten years. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they're always very respectful, Mark. And we have a we have a wonderful relationship. Uh, I, I'm just saying that because my 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 mother listens to all of your podcasts here, so I, I have to I have to tell her that you know. No, um, ah, listen, you know, we, we've got a good relationship. You know, we'll be honest with each other, and we'll tell each other what we're thinking, and um, 
with you know Sam, I obviously played with him as a partner when when he was first starting out, um, and you know he's gone on and done way more in Bampton than than I ever have. So I've I felt that I've I've learned a lot from from the things that he's picked up and the things he's done. Um, and then you know I worked directly with Chloe in the lead up to the London Olympics. She was training at home in Dublin, and this is when we were first trying to create the centre at home. And my goal that I was given as the, the coach responsible for the players in Ireland was to see if we could qualify a player training from home. Uh, and we did that with Chloe and then she became the first Irish person to win a match at the Olympics and then had a really close three set match with Pihon Yang. Um, so it was, you know, we surpassed probably what we achieved from training at a base at home. And then Josh, uh, I worked with him since he was, you know, 11, 12 years of age when he was first starting out. Um, I used to bring him to the local training where I was taken at the time down in Connacht uh, and worked a lot with him uh, as he as he grew up. So I've had, you know, lots of experience. A lot of work with him when, when he was young. And um, I, I would say, you know, Josh and Chloe, because I, I did a lot of work with Chloe when she was going through her singles. Now, she had developed a lot from her time in, in Sweden under Tom Reedy. Uh, and when she came to Dublin, it was like trying to just make sure that her level stayed where it was. And then also when it came to the Olympic tournaments that she could get her best out on court. And, and we really were able to do that. Uh, but yeah, I spent a lot of time with Josh when he was a junior, uh, bringing him up, uh, trying to get him playing at, at a certain level. So it was it was a good experience uh, in the early years working with those guys, and you know it's been great ever since. I've been lucky enough to sit at the back of the court uh, for Josh and Sam winning the European Games bronze medal, and then in 20, 2019. nineteen, um, I got the repeat experience where I was the coach when Sam and Chloe win their European bronze uh, when they beat Tabling and Peak in the quarters of the one in Minsk. So, you know, you can't put a price on coaching someone who wins a medal. But then when it's your brother and sister, you know, it's just multiply it by 100, you know. Uh, that's a good question very good question but for me it's not about saying you know that you're going to be a professional badminton player or you're going to be an Olympian or you're going to be a world medalist a European medalist it's about trying to get every single player uh, especially the guys that are enthusiastic to the best level that they possibly can reach and you know that could be me working with a club player saying you're a great D player let's make a realistic goal of trying to get you to a grade B player. And if they're realistic about their aspirations, they'll reach it. But if they're saying, hey, I'm, I'm 34 years of age and uh, with no history of, of doing well, they want to win a national title, you, you have to then maybe just say, okay, let's step, take a step back. Where can we get to first? Um, but, you know, with the right attitude, you can go a long way. But you do need that level of talent as well to to be able to win at the at, at the top top level
Yeah, well, that's basically our our, our technique camp. Um, we we do our technique camps for that's for the juvenile side of things. Uh, for the for the senior side of things, we've tried to create uh, a graded system for players that they can compete from all the way from uh, H all the way up to A, and they get a chance to play their graded nationals each year. So that's a massive thing for them. And uh, Dave McGill, our CEO, did a great thing where they brought in an international for the lower grade of players between and Wales, Ireland, where you win your, well, the way in Ireland it worked was if you win your graded nationals, you got to represent Ireland in that grade against England, Scotland and Wales. And the, we brought the tournament to the National Indoor Arena. We got the Onyx mats, we got the scoreboards, we got the umpires, the service judges. So I'm sure it was a really daunting experience for for the players, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I can tell you it was an absolutely brilliant day to see to see players, you know, that were D grade players that had been playing all their life getting a chance to pull on a national jersey and go out there and play I think you know that's something that will last with them forever to to go out and and they have that shirt and uh, they got to play against players uh, the same level as them from a different country so it was a huge success and I look forward to seeing it again I'm I'm not sure if it moves to England or Scotland uh, on the next occasion but it's something for you to look out for Martin I think you'd really enjoy it (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you, you you got yeah you got yeah for for you know your uh, county level players and and your club level players, it's nice nice for them to see where they where they are and there's some there's some brilliant league systems in Ireland as well. Uh, the Dublin District League uh, has like, you know, eight nine divisions um, that that they have, and when you go to the finals day of the Dublin District League and Cups, it's like a it's like a festival. There's you know some of the some of the lower divisions they come and they've got their mum, their dad, their grannies, their grandas, everybody with them, and the hall is absolutely packed so the atmosphere is brilliant uh between these th- these matches so they do a great job and i know all their counties do fantastic work with the leagues that they run as well um so so there's a great community of Bampton in ireland where where they're competing against each other yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thankfully uh uh, they haven't run in so far, so uh, yeah, I won't, I won't have to, I won't have to hide, uh, hide the kid in the in the picture. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, and uh, Kate and Moya also have a double, so yeah, nice to have uh, two Irish left in the last sixteen. So yeah, fingers crossed for tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Cheers.